Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Creator. So this is the second video of the series. In the first video, I talked about the topic that you need to know to be successful in data science or to find a data scientist uh, job. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't watched that video, I will leave a card or uh, I will leave the link in the description. You can check out that video. The aim of this video is to show you the project that you can do. It's a very uh, interesting project uh, and it is taking quite a lot of popularity in recent times. It's not a new topic, but still, uh, many companies are now trying to achieve image uh, semantic segmentation. So what basically image uh, semantic segmentation is, uh, you will have a real image which you need to convert into mask image where you will uh, color code different objects with different colors. So here you can see the roof is being colored into gray. All the road is being colored into pink or purple and human beings are uh, colored into reddish maybe so yeah uh, this is basically semantic segmentation and it has a lot of use cases in autonomous car driving or maybe in aerial imagery uh, and because maybe in a flight there will be cameras so if you can segment each uh, image and you can tell uh, where a path is or where the clean land is so that in case of emergency a flight can land in those areas so yeah it can be used in a lot of different areas um, so yeah uh, and also for any project that you do I highly suggest you to maintain some sort of folder structure because many times I've seen uh, people just create one IPython notebook and they do everything in that and they just post it on github if they want to so when you uh, create this type of folder structure it actually looks good and when you post this whole folder structure on your github uh, employers think yeah you do things in a more manageable way and it looks very professional so yeah I highly suggest you to maintain some sort of uh, folder structure uh, now let's move on to our objective so our objective is to convert real images to masked images and here we have uh, 24 different uh, categories where paved area is colored into some color dirt is colored into some color grass is colored in different color so we have basically 24 uh, classes and you can also consider it as a, a multi-class classification problem because what our uh, model will try to do is it will try to predict each pixel uh, which class it belongs to so basically it's a multi-class classification it's just we are using different type of algorithms here to do that we will discuss about all those things so yeah uh, and let me just talk about a little bit about the data set so if you want to download the data set you can go to this link and if you go all the way to the down uh, here you can see downloads if you just fill this uh, google form uh, they will send you the data set on your email so yeah this is what you need to fill um, but yeah i have already downloaded the data set so i will not go with that but you can fill all the details and you can get the data set. it's a very good data set or you can just simply go on kaggle and you can find for uh, aerial imagery or something like that and you will find some data set there or if you already have some sort of data set you can use this whole code on your own data set. Um, the processing will vary based on what type of data set you have. Uh, but I will just talk a little bit about this data set now. So we have 400 images and each of them uh, has a dimension uh, 6000 into uh, 4000. So it's a very high quality images and it's they are actually drone shots. So I have taken two different approaches in this project where I have resized the uh, original image to lower dimension uh, which is 128 cross 128 if I remember correctly and uh, we will see in a uh, little bit of time and uh, the second uh, method is as we have very huge images large size images I am converting into small patches of 1000 cross 1000 so that we will have more training data so I would like to assume that it will perform better as compared to the first uh, first method but we will see how they are performing in we will discuss about all those things in a few minutes. Here I am simply importing all the required packages. Maybe I am not using all of them like image data generator. What I usually do is if I am doing some related project, I just go to my previous project, I copy everything and paste it. And usually I usually when I am not using some package, I remove it, but I forgot to remove some of them here. Um, so yeah, that's what. And uh, I am also using this package called uh, segmentation underscore model. So this package is really handy. If you want to do uh, segmentation projects or image segmentation because they already have those models in here so you don't have to write 
the architecture by yourself it will do those things for you um, so yeah i am just changing the framework that it is using from tensorflow to tensorflow.keras because a lot of functionality or keras and tensorflow has been merged so they work hand in hand so yeah that's why i have changed the framework if you don't change it it will give some error for some of the functions which is which it is using so yeah that's what uh, so this is the first approach where i'm just converting the images to smaller size so i've created a function and i like to do things in functions because it keeps your code clean and uh, it makes it easy to manage and if somebody's looking at your code it uh, looks very clean and it's easy to understand and also it is very important you document your code uh, really well so you can see i'm using a lot of markdown uh, here and there and also i'm using comments everywhere wherever i want to explain things here everything is very basic so i didn't really explain everything but uh, i will walk you through with each line now so this is just a uh, loading data right so i'm passing a folder directory where my data set is so here you can see i have my data and i have different uh, folders here so they are present in uh, different directories so if i go here uh, i have training set here so i can find my images in this folder and if i go to gt and if i go to semantic here i can find the uh, label images so uh, it is in some sort of very complicated hierarchy and i try to keep kept it that way simply i was just changing the path here and i'm using those things so yeah i'm passing the directory where i have real images and mass images so for first uh, first we i'm doing it for real images so here i pass the link for real images and then i am picking uh, each image at a time in this folder and then i'm reading it uh, so basically here i'm going through each and every uh, directory in that directory i'm going through each and every images so if that makes sense so and i'm reading that using opencv and uh, opencv reads images into bgr format so i'm converting it into rgb so that it doesn't look uh, very odd and then i'm resizing it to 120 cross 120 uh, I should have cropped it rather than uh, resizing it because when you do uh, semantic segmentation, it's better to crop your images rather than resizing them. But uh, if I was cropping them, then I was losing a lot of information. So I thought, okay, let's give it a try with uh, resizing and see how it performs. So one exercise for you can be you can try it with uh, cropping the images. And with these lines, I'm just simply uh, converting it into an empire array. And then I'm appending it into my list and I'm returning it. Uh, and now this variable contains all the uh, images, uh, processed images now. You can see it processed. And same I did for masked dataset as well. So basically, masked dataset or the folder has uh, all the images in this format, and images dataset or images folder has all the real images. So that's what I did, and then I converted them into a NumPy array because NumPy array integrates very well with all the machine learning or deep learning uh, architecture or packages which we have. So I just saw the shape that we have. So here we have 400 images, like we discussed, and I reshaped them to 128 cross 128, and we have three channels RGB. So that's how the images right now looks like and just for sanity check I plotted them side by side to see if they are still in proper format. So yeah, they look okay to me. After that, I we also have these mask labels. So what mask label is, here you can see paved area. So maybe this is paved area which uh, is encoded in RGB values using these values. So 128 for R green is 64 and blue is 128 so uh, this color code represent the paved area so that is there in this data frame so we will use this data frame now and instead of three values we will replace them with one value because we want to make it a classification problem so wherever we will find uh, 2 135 115 we will replace it with 20 so just like and so this function rgb2 labels will do just that so here i am creating a placeholder uh, which will have shape same as our image 
So our image is 128 cross 128. So we will create a placeholder or a matrix of 128 cross 128, uh, which will have all zeros filled in. And uh, so in that, what I will do is I will go through my images and uh, each by uh, by like we have 23. So at first it will have 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, like that. Uh, it will go all the way till uh, 23. And uh, whenever the image will have let's say these values uh, to for now we will see for zero so for for, for i equal to zero we will have zero 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 so it will check wherever it will have zero 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 it will fill it with uh, zero in everywhere so initially we have in our original image we don't have any zeros so that's there but when i will be one it will search for all the values which should have 128 uh, 64 and uh, 128 again so it will replace it with uh, 1 so that is exactly what I am doing with the, this line of code so it's that simple and uh, then we are just taking the first channel because now we have uh, instead of all three different channels we have used only one number so now we have only one channel so we don't need three different channels so we are taking all the rows 128 all the columns 128 but we are taking only one channel which is zero at the zero index and i'm returning that label so that is exactly what i'm doing in this function and i'm calling this function for each image so it will run for 400 times and then it will be all the 400 labels will be labeled images will be stored in our labels and then again i'm converting it to uh, numpy array because it is more friendly to our models or architecture or different packages and then I am also expanding the dimension which I am adding the channel dimension because whenever we pass our images to deep learning network it, ex it expects the images to have three uh, third axis or fourth axis I should say uh, which will consider as a channel I will show you in a just a bit or do we have it up here yeah so this is the number of images this is the uh, height this is width and then this is the channel so when we what we did is we had just this much so we added one more dimension to it and it will just contain one so yeah so far so good and again i just wanted to see if everything is still okay so it yeah it still looks okay and we have all these uh, unique labels now uh, we will move on to modeling part but before that we need a little bit of uh, uh, label encoding so in n classes i am just storing the number of classes that i have so that is what i'm doing here and here i am doing one hot encoding for my labels so i have uh, 28 different classes so what it will do it will create 23 different columns uh, 0 1 2 3 4 till 22 and uh, it will do one hot encoding so let's say if my data point is of class 2 so in uh, column 2 it will have 1 and rest other columns will have 0 just like that it will do for all the images so that's what i am doing here at labels underscore cat and now i am dividing my data set into train test split and uh, i'm just setting random state as what it will use in the anything else so yeah that is what uh, our data looks like as of now now we will use uh, now we will do modeling and for this part i'm using transfer learning so if you don't know transfer learning uh do let me in the comment section or whatever terms i'm using in this uh tutorial if you don't understand any of those just let me in the comment section i'll be more than happy to uh make a video on that if that helps so yeah um here we are using resnet as our backbone or you can say uh, pre-trained model uh, from where we are taking weights and we will use those weight as our starting point and then our train our uh, segmentation model so here you can see the architecture it's pretty simple it is it has a convolutional uh, conv layer and then there is a spool layer and then bunch of convolutional layers and average spool layer and then fully connected layer and you can also see these connections they are con they are known as skip connections so it helps you to uh, handle uh, exploding gradient or vanishing gradient 
problems if you don't know what is uh, vanishing or exploding region let me explain you with an analogy so uh, consider some memory that you have from past 10 years maybe and you consider at that point it was not uh, that useful or you didn't find it to be very exciting so over the years you tend to forget those memories right so they vanish from your mind so the weight is something which keeps things in your uh, brain so you thought okay it's not very important so you didn't assign a very uh, huge weight to it or a good amount of weight to it and it just vanished and that's what vanishing gradient is and exploding gradient is again uh, up, uh, like few years ago you came across some incident and maybe that event was very traumatizing or something and it stayed in your brain and whenever you saw something very close to it uh, it was again uh, it, it felt very fresh and that memory was uh, there in your memory for a very long time and you kept on assigning very uh, huge amount of weights to it so that is called exploding gradient so to handle those things we use the skip connections so uh, the this is the sequential line where your data is going but then you take some data from this part and you pass it on to a uh, few convolution layers, you skip some convolution layers and then you concatenate with the output of this convolution layer. So that is your uh, uh, skip connection. It helps you to uh, overcome the problem of vanishing gradient and exploding gradient. So yeah, I like to explain things using analogy because that way people tend to remember things for a very longer term and it makes very easy to understand people. So if you like this thing, uh, do let me know. I will explain other concepts as well. So if you don't know how convolutional layer works, what is this or what is uh, pooling layer or what is average pool. So if you don't know all these things, uh, do let me know. I will make a very good video on that because I was when I was learning, I tried looking for a lot of convolutional uh, layers video and there are many explaining videos, but then I didn't like most of them. So yeah, uh, if you want me to do a video, I can do that as well. So just let me know in the comment section. Um, yeah, so uh, as you can see here, I'm using ResNet 34 as my backbone, and by using get, get processing, I'm I'm taking up all the processing that was performed on the ImageNet dataset before training ResNet model. So basically, uh, ResNet is trained on ImageNet dataset. So Obviously, before passing that whole image to your ResNet model, uh, it was processed heavily. So we need to do those processing on our images as well, so that it will seem much familiar to this model and the weights which we are taking, it will make more sense for our image. So that's what uh, I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get all the uh, processing or the image processing that was done into this variable. Now I've got this here, I'm performing those image processing on my train and test data set. And now our my data set is prepared and it's ready to be segmented. So for segmentation, I'm using UNET. Uh, so what UNET is, I will just explain you in brief. So this is what this is taken from, uh, this is taken from Wikipedia. So here they are using uh, 3 cross 256, 256. So 256, 256 is the size of the image. So it was in original paper, they are using dimension as 256, 256. We are using uh, 128. And 3 is the channel, number of channel RGB. So we are passing an RGB channel, uh, RGB image to our uh, convolutional layer. After that, it is doing max pool. Again, convolutional layer, max pool, convolutional layer, max pool, and convolutional layer. So this was uh, down con, or we can say normal con convolutional operation and now that we have reached uh, up to certain extent now it will again do uh, transport transpose uh, convolutional or up con or uh, reverse con people call it in very different ways but uh, to implement in code we usually can do it using transpose uh, con so again if you don't understand all these things let me know in the comment section i'll do the video so now so far so good and after that when it tries to up on you can see these connections again these acts like skip connections so it tries to retain as much information as it can so now we are again up on being so uh, it with this uh, output of this uh, layer and uh, this layer it is being concatenated or they are just merging 
and it is being passed on to the next layer. So again, we are doing concatenation here and passing it on to the next layer. And then finally, we will get the output of similar uh, dimension. But you can see here we have K. So it depends on uh, how many filters you are using. So based on that, it will vary. So it depends on that. Um, so yeah, that's what uh, unit looks like. And after that, we are simply using our segmentation model package and from that we are calling unit and that we are passing our backbone which is uh, ResNet 34 and we are telling uh, take all the weights from ImageNet uh, data set and uh, we are using n classes so we have 23 classes I suppose and uh, then at the end we have this softmax. So this is this softmax is the activation function. So this is for the last uh, last layer, fully connected layer, if you uh, want to call it. We usually call it fully connected layer, right? So the last layer is usually a fully connected layer. So we are using softmax because we have multi-class classification. If we had binary class classification, or if we wanted to uh, simply segment our images into two colors, so let's say black and white, we could have used uh, sigmoid here. So usually for multi-class classification, we use softmax and metrics. I'm using accuracy, keeping it simple and uh, optimizer. I'm using Adam. You can use Adagrad, you can use SGD, whatever you feel. So when you are working on this project, I highly suggest you to try different activation functions, uh, different uh, pre-trained models. Like I'm using ResNet, you can use VGG, Inception, Exception. There are tons and tons of pre-trained models. So you can try those and see which one is performing better. Um, so yeah, uh, and I'm using categorical cross entropy as my loss function because we have multi class classification and then metrics is accuracy. And if you want to see your uh, architecture or how your model looks like, you can always use model dot summary. So model is your object and you can do dot summary. So it will simply show you everything. So if I click here, it will open it in the next window and it's actually a very huge output. After that, we are ready to uh, fit our model. So here I'm using batch size of uh, 16 because uh, when I was using 32, it was giving me some memory exhaustion error or resource allocation error. So if you are getting something like that, you can play around with this batch size. So smaller the batch size, uh, less memory it needs in your uh, RAM. So that's there, and I'm using my X train and uh, Y train. I'm using uh, 100 epochs, so I'm running it for 100 times, and uh, and verbose is equal to one. So verb what verbose does is it uh, this what you want to display, how much you want to display while training. So here I'm displaying uh, loss accuracy, well loss, well accuracy. So yeah, you can do zero, it will not print all these things. If you do print two, maybe it will print even more or something like that. So yeah, you can use zero, one, two. So these are the possible values of purpose. And then I'm using press data as my validation. So it is calculating all those scores. So by the end of the 100 epochs, I'm getting validation loss as 0.8, which can definitely be improved. So loss should be minimum and accuracy should be maximum. So accuracy, go, accuracy can go up to one and uh, validation loss can go up to zero. So zero is the best value here, one is the best value here. So we can say that we have 79% accuracy, which is not best, but it uh, it's fine and it is perfectly, it is doing okay. Loss can again be moved closer to zero. And I just wanted to plot and see how train and validation accuracy is doing. So they're performing somewhat similar and we can say that it's, it's not overfit. Or under fit, so it is acceptable. You can see wherever there is a drop in uh, training accuracy, there is uh, more drop in validation accuracy. So yeah, model is not perfect, but uh, it is doing fine job. So I saved my model using this command. I've commented it. So if you want to save your model, you can uncomment it and run. And then I'm loading my model, and then I'm trying to make predictions. So I'm calling model dot predict, and I'm passing my x test. Um, now we have the prediction value. So our prediction value again be in one hot encoded format, but instead of uh, zero then one, it will have probability to each class. So let's say a uh, pixel uh, should be of class three, maybe. So it will have probability of 0 0.7. 
and rest will have less values so up what rmax will do is it will store uh, 3 to it and uh, rest other values will be uh, it will just give it as 3 and same i'm doing for my test also in test i have absolute 1 and zeros so again if my class 3 has 1 and rest other uh, classes are having 0 so i will simply uh, return 3 into this one so yeah that's what i am doing there and now i'm randomly picking one image from my data set uh, and then i'm trying to print it so i'm taking out a real image i'm taking out the test label and i'm taking out the print predicted one so this is the real one this is the one we have in our data set already and this is what our model has predicted so definitely it is not perfect but i chose this specific image because it has a lot of things going on in here it has human being it has buildings it has uh, path and all those things so it is a very complex image but still you can see our model is doing pretty good job here uh, for most part it is doing fine so it is acceptable for me uh, but if you want to be more accurate you can play around with a lot of different parameters like i told you uh, you can use different pretend models you can use different batch size you can increase epoch you can have uh, different learning rate for this i'll show you in a while now so yeah uh, this is the first approach that i took and now we will move on to the second approach where i'm going to patchify the image or i will divide this image into different patches so this uh, function does uh, all the patchy fine for you so i as if you remember i have uh, imported this patchify uh, patchify package here so i'll be using just that and uh, so yeah uh, let me explain you everything it looks scary but it's not exactly so in this i am passing the folder directory and patch size so here i'm using patch size as thousand um again again i'm going through all the images in this case i'm using just 100 images because again if i run for around 400 images it would have given me a lot of uh, data points but uh, also to save some memory and speed up the process i'm using just 100 images if your memory allows you you can go all the way up to 400 and maybe you can reduce the patch size also so this can also be a hyperparameter. I won't say hyperparameter because it, I tried with multiple uh, patches, multiple different patches of patch size, but uh, it didn't really improve much. So yeah, you can try whatever you want. And uh, if you don't have a very strong configured laptop, you can always use Google Colab. It's a free resource, and there you can get GPX, GPU access as well. Uh, so yeah, if you, and if you don't know how to use uh, Google Colab, I have a tutorial. I will again leave a card. You can watch that and it will make your life much easier so yeah, i'm going over through all the images and uh, so it will run for 400 uh oh sorry 100 because i'm using only 100 images so it will run for 100 iteration so it will pick each image and then it will try to read it and then again the same thing uh vgr to rgb so these have uh, commented but before i was trying uh, different patch size so i was using 258 initially so when you use 258 it is not perfectly it is it won't perfectly divide 6000 and 4000 so that's why i was storing the integer value in these so if i divide 6000 with uh, let me quickly open up uh, the calculator and i will show you that so if i divide uh, 6000 by uh, what was that 256 maybe yeah or 28 whatever so it, it it gives me uh 23 right so uh our uh size x will contain 23 and similarly this will contain 15 then i will divide 5 4000 uh with uh, 4000 with uh, uh our patch size but in this case i have thousand so it divides them perfectly so in that scenario i didn't need uh, size x either that's why i have commented it so if you are using some patch size which is not perfectly dividing your uh dividing your image size which is 6000 plus 4000 so in that case you should or you can use this and uh, yeah so that's there and after calculating x and y you can crop your image and after that you can apply patchy file on that 
So I'm not doing all those things. I am simply uh, converting it from a VGR to RGB because the price size is thousand, and then I'm converting it into NumPy array, and then I'm passing it into a Apache file. In Apache, I'm passing my uh, image, uh, which is in NumPy format, and then I'm passing patch size, and I am passing uh, a number of channels, and then I am passing again steps as patch size. So, if you don't give uh, steps, it will shift uh, by one pixel only. So, if you have this whole image and it is trying to patchify this part, so this will be your first patch, and if you are not specifying your patch size, it will just move one pixel. And then it will do this much patch and then it will create a patch but when you are giving patch size uh, equal to uh, step size equal to patch size uh, it will what it will do is it will convert this as first patch this will be second patch this will be third patch so something like that so i hope you were able to understand that now uh, so yeah it has converted uh, patch size so basically when you are dividing your 6000 cross 4000 into 1000 cross 1000 patch you will have 6 cross 4 patches in from one image so it will be 24 so i will iterate over those so first i will go through 6 and then i will go through all the 4 uh, patches let me uh, explain a little bit right so like i told you 6000 uh, divided by 1000 is 6 and 4000 divided by 1000 is 4 so we will have a matrix of uh, 6 cross 4 so i is iterating from 0 to 6 or 0 to 5 and uh, j will iterate from 0 to 3 so for initial bit i will have 0 comma 0 so my first patch and uh, all rows all columns which is 1000 rows 1000 columns now it will move on to 0 1 so uh, from first row second patch it will have 0 comma 1 1000 rows 1000 columns so that is what it is doing and so far uh, it will keep on moving so it will have all 24 uh, patches and uh, so yeah it will have the first patch it will take it in that and now uh, we don't need all the dimensions so we just need the zeroth one so we will take that and we will resize it to uh, 128 cross 128 so this time we have 1000 cross 1000 so we are just downscaling it so here resizing won't make much uh, difference because we are not changing the aspect ratio after that i am appending it into a uh, list and uh, i'm just gonna uh, return that list but after taking all the 24 patches so for each image it will do that and it will store it in this and now our image data set will have patches instead of images uh, so yeah i'm storing it into patch image data set and same thing will be done for uh, masked as well and I'm converting them into NumPy array and from here on everything will be same but as you can see here we have now more training data so but then apart from that size and dimension is still same and we will perform RGB2 labels what I explained it before so like I told you everything is going to stay same and just for sanity check I am printing them in multiple times because that way I know that I haven't made any mistakes and now my data is ready to be trained I am using exactly everything same but here I, as you can see I am using learning rate little bit different now so previously I just passed a string as Adam now I am calling Adam and in that I am passing learning rate you can also pass uh, many other parameters if you see the documentation so momentum also you can pass so there are many different things that you can play with and then I am passing the optimizer here and I'm also using some uh, callbacks. So callbacks are really handy things. So if you don't know what callbacks are, it uh, allows you to control your model training. So here I'm storing or saving only the best model. So the best model will be saved in models directory with this file name. Early stopping uh, stops your training early. So I'm here taking accuracy as my matrix or monitor so when my accuracy won't change for let's say five iteration it will stop my training so it will not go all the way to 100 epochs so yeah it saves quite a lot of time and here i'm using that size of 32 uh, you can again play around with that and to use callbacks you just need to 
store all the callbacks into a list and pass it to one of the parameters which is callback equal to callbacks I mean you can name this variable as anything but they should be callbacks and if you see results it is again very similar to what we had in the previous step so it hasn't uh, improved a lot but uh, yeah that's there making predictions and printing it here but you can see here it seems like it is acting more weird as compared to what we had before but uh, if we actually closely see uh, this a uh, this and this has similar color and texture and that is what our model feels like it should be so and also this initially even i thought this might be a building and it's not a shadow and that's what our model is also thinking uh, it to be a building but it's not correct obviously so uh i don't know i mean if you can say it as overfit or not but uh, definitely i sometimes i feel this is doing better than uh, the original label one but then definitely this has been done by a human being and they know that it is shadow so definitely this is more accurate and our model should have predicted something like this so there is still scope of uh, improving it and the reason why I think our model is doing a little bit worse than the first approach is because now we are patching the image so if there was another image or another patch which was somewhere here it would have had this uh, full building and maybe it would have had more ground area and green area and something so our model would have understood it even better because if we see this particular image it has lot of grey area and uh, very few other things so maybe our model got confused and that's why it is predicting it to be uh, maybe green everywhere and purple most of the areas so yeah that's there uh, so in my opinion the first approach seems to be better but uh, yeah uh, with few more changes we can maybe improve them also i have given some pointers which you can try so in second approach we can try uh differentiating our data set into train st train test split uh in certain ways because maybe we right now we are doing it randomly so maybe we can uh use first 300 images in our train set and uh, later uh, 100 images in our test set so maybe we can do that maybe it will help i don't know uh you can try that as well and uh, here i'm using resnet as backbone so you can try vgg inception and all those things so and you can see uh, if it is improving your model's accuracy or not so i highly suggest uh, doing this uh, project because it is not that conventional uh, image classification problem where you take ms data set and uh, do digit classification now nobody gets impressed with all those kind of projects so this project is definitely a must have and you should uh, do this and it will look uh, really good on your resume i have more projects uh, in pipeline so i will be making videos for those as well and if you want to understand any concept uh, using the analogies that i use so if you like those uh, do let me know i will be more than happy to make uh, videos for that as well so yeah uh, if you want those videos subscribe to the channel and uh, if you want to download data science notes then there is in the description download that you can also join our telegram group and i also do live uh, q a on uh, my channel on saturdays so where i answer questions related to data science masters abroad and all those things so if you would like to join you can join that as well so yeah hope to see you in the next video bye happy learning